Hello everyone, this is Robert. So I've been doing a lot of printing of ASA on the Prusa XL for my modular filament storage project thing. And I think I got everything pretty well dialed in on the XL. So I wanted to kind of do a follow-up video to the previous video I did and kind of um, give you the tips and tricks and things I've learned. I think I have about five rolls of ASA that I've printed with it, and I'm definitely getting very good repeatable results. So let's dive right into what I'm doing and what's working out for me. So before we get started, I want to say thank you for all the good comments and suggestions in the previous video. There was some good discussion in there, and I'm going to be talking about some of those things in this video. But as always, please feel free to use the chapters to skip around. So the first thing I want to talk about is, of course, temperature. Uh, whenever you try and use an unenclosed printer for materials that need to be enclosed, and in that last video I was trying to use that shower curtain to kind of enclose everything, increase the temperature, and basically create an enclosed printer, and it would have worked, and it does work, but it so happened that that was probably the worst weekend to do that test. It was extremely cold outside, like negative 15. I think it hit like negative 25 degrees wind chill at night. And it was just kind of the worst time to be doing that test. But hey, that's what I wanted to kind of test. I wanted to test this in worst case scenario because I know a lot of people have their printers out in a garage. This is traditionally heat controlled. I mean, it is heat controlled. But when the temperature gets that low, the heat pump can't really keep up. So it was actually getting really, really cold in here. Once the temperature outside stabilized and I could get this back up to about 70 degrees, pretty much every issue went away. The first layer was better. Um, I was having some issues with that first layer. I was getting a little bit of elephant foot. I was getting really bad surface finish on the top layer. All of those things pretty much went away. And then it was just a matter of making some final little tweaks and tunes to it. So can you use an unenclosed printer with kind of a shower curtain enclosure Yes, as long as your ambient temperature is reasonable. If it's comfortable, it's probably going to be fine. If it's too cold, you're probably going to run into further issues. That was the first thing that I learned. So in the previous video, a few people were asking why I used this part to test when it really didn't max out the build volume of the XL. And the reason is this part was just much harder to print because it's relatively flat. You have these higher surfaces on the side, so it just kind of wants to warp. But this is the part that I actually needed to print on the XL. I needed the extra build volume. It's not huge. Um, I think it's like 250 by 250 or 260, something like that. So it's bigger than the build volume of like an X1C. Not massive on the XL, but I definitely needed the size of the XL to print it. This is one of the last ones that I printed, and that is the um, top layer. You can see everything looks really nice. Bottom layer looks really good as well. No problems. There's a little bit of eh, maybe minor ringing um, on the outsides, but overall this looks really good, and it is flat, no warping. And this part is just much easier to print. You're not going to have this warp as much as this one. But if we take a closer look, this is one of the first ones that I printed. I'll show you the surface finish difference and um, what I did to kind of correct that. So as you can see, there's a pretty dramatic print quality difference on the top layer between these two. And the settings were exactly the same. I used the same print file. But on this one, I changed the flow down to 95%, and this one was printed in a higher ambient temperature. The ambient temperature in the shop was about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas only about 50 degrees Fahrenheit with this one. In both cases, the temperature inside the enclosure um, around the shower curtain was still around 95 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, but this one just suffered so much more just due to the lower ambient temperature. The printer was just struggling to keep up with those temperatures. So a really subtle difference um, in settings, but it made a pretty dramatic difference in the actual print quality. So the final thing that I did was a good suggestion from a lot of people in the comments on the last video, and that was to slowly cool down the print bed. I had no issue with adhering to the print bed during the print, but as soon as the print ended, it would lift up in the middle and kind of bow like that. And in something like the Bamboo X1C or the Creality K1 Max, those are enclosed printers, so it's going to kind of keep the heat relatively well contained for a long time after the print is finished. But on the X1C, it's completely open. Yeah, I've got the shower curtain there, but it's really not good insulation, so it was cooling down way too fast after the print. So 
it was just a simple matter of adding some G-code into the filament profile that would make it cool down much slower. So let's go take a look at that and I'll kind of explain what the code means. So if you've never done custom G-code on a print, it's relatively simple once you know what you need to do. So we're gonna go over to filament settings or here in Persia Slicer, and then we're gonna go down to custom G-code. I already have all this set up and you can see the code down here. I'll click edit just so you can see a little bit better. This is G-code that's going to run at the end of the print. So after the print's done, it's gonna run this, but there's a couple things that you need to keep in mind. When it's done, it's literally just done with the last line. So the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to move the head back to the home position. So we're gonna go G28, X0, Y0. Um, G commands are generally movement commands and M commands are generally machine commands. So this is gonna move us back to X0, Y0. Then M104 is actually what's gonna turn off the extruder. Then we're gonna do an M84, which is gonna disable the motors. This is just, for the next, you know, 40 minutes or 50 minutes, we're gonna be slowly ramping down the bed. We don't need to have those motors activated, so we're gonna turn those off. And then here we have a series of commands that are going to slowly cool down the bed. And all we're doing is sending an M190 with S90, that is the temperature, 90 degrees Celsius. Then it's gonna wait for 10 minutes, then we go down to 80, 70, 60, and so on. And these dwell commands just allow the machine to wait. So we're just gonna dwell for 600. And I can't remember, but you can do this in either seconds or microseconds or minutes. Um, the way I have it set up here, this is going to dwell for 10 minutes, so 600. And then at the very end, we're gonna do another M40 or M140 with S0 and that's gonna turn off the bed. So it's pretty much as simple as that. It's just gonna slowly cool down. And I think somewhere around like, I don't know, here is when the part would just kind of slowly start to lift off because it gets cool enough and I could just kind of grab it off the bed and hit stop. But this worked out really well. I didn't have any warping issues and the part was able to cool down nice and slowly you can absolutely get great results printing ASA or possibly ABS on the Prusa XL as long as you follow a few simple steps. You're gonna need some sort of enclosure. In the comments on the last video, people were talking about trash bags, cardboard boxes, I'm using the shower curtain. All of those are perfectly viable solutions. You just need to kind of contain the heat and control for drafts. I found that when the ambient temperature was below 70 degrees Fahrenheit, I started having some issues. That's relatively warm. If this is not in a temperature controlled environment, you might run into some problems with temperature. Additionally, I found that about 100 degrees Fahrenheit inside the chamber was about the ideal. Anything hotter than that is great too. The other thing with the XL is that it's really finicky with filament. And um, a lot of people have noticed this that Cheap filaments don't really work as well as you might think, and um, you know, flow calibration is definitely a thing. I got a lot better results once I started tweaking the flow calibration. I think it was 95, 96%. That ended up being the perfect um, thing for the PolyLite, PolyMaker, PolyLite ASA that I was using. So you might need to kind of adjust that flow in addition to keeping the temperature good. And if you have a part that is prone to warping, you're gonna to wanna to cool it off slowly. Now this is something that is kinda of true for pretty much any material that is prone to warping. I found this in the bamboo as well. I had a couple parts I was trying to kind of um, cycle through there really quickly. You know, I was printing a bunch of these on the bamboo. And if I pulled it right off the print bed when it was hot, set on the workbench, it would warp worse than what I was seeing on the XL. So for any of these parts, they're prone to warping, big flat parts, you're gonna need to let them cool down just a little bit, stabilize the internal temperature before you re remove them from the print bed. And if you don't have an enclosure, you need to kind of control the print bed temperature as well, if that all makes sense. But I have been printing quite a bit. I have a lot of these parts. Um, everything has been working out great. The machine has been literally reprint, wait, pull it off, hit reprint, no issues whatsoever, and it's been perfectly consistent every single time. So I'm pretty happy about that. So as always, thanks for watching. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below, and I will see you in the next video.